God's word must be exalted. You must consecrate yourself to live a, the life of holiness, living by the word. People want to live different kinds of concepts of holiness. There's only one kind of holiness. There's only one kind of holiness. Holiness, consecration to living by what God said to do. <laughs> and that has nothing to do really with rules and regulations. It has to do with doing power and demonstration of the spirit. That's what it has to do with. Hallelujah. Believing that you carry something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I tell you. I tell you. You start believing that you carry something. You start believing what God has done for you. I'm telling you right now, uh, the anointing will flow out of you in your pajamas, walking around with your hair all messed up in the morning. People fall out under the power of God. Huh? Yeah, it's true. It's true. People fall out under the power of God. My musik ate in Huh? And I'm always again a day higher. Hallelujah. Uh, you just wave at people and say hello. And the fire of God falls. It's true. Tonight I'm getting, ready, getting you ready. Because I want you to understand when you begin to take the, the, the sacred things of God and you make them familiar to you, you disconnect yourself from the flow of God. You disconnect, disconnect yourself from the flow of the Spirit. And many have done that. They've done that with every dimension of the church and every dimension of his ministries. And that's why so many people are stuck in a ditch. See, I look at familiarity as an opposite to sacred. Because I, I classify familiarity as a synonym with that which is common. And that is opposite to sacred. God's things are sacred. And he loves all of us. He loves us. But when he puts sacred on a person, and that sacred increases in cooperation, you got to understand. He's very jealous over that. He's very jealous over that. It's a different classification. And one of the great things that happens to all of us is when we begin to appreciate that, recognize that, honor that, reverence that. Hallelujah. Oh, it's all voluntary. You know, when I think one of my greatest downfalls, one of the things that has been my biggest weakness is I've gone beyond my limitations and tried to describe to people what's holding them back when God had regulated it to a realm of discovery. Because I just didn't want people to be left out. I see them stuck in their problem. But I've discovered over and again that Father leaves it to each man's hunger and desperation to discover these wonderful things of the Spirit. Tonight I'm telling you we want you to get hungry enough to where that you can discover the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 So the Holy Ghost can come and reveal to you how beautiful heaven is and how beautiful the heavenly things are. How wonderful those things that God has anointed and how precious they are to him. Amen. And that you are so earnestly to contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the same. And, and, and continue and, and continually ask and, and desire a greater anointing in your life a greater manifestation of the sacred. And thus, in giving a greater desire towards the sacred, you give your life as an offering that's sacred, holy, in other words, huh? sacred, holy, and a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Well, I'll tell you right now, I just want you to know that you're glad to be here. Uh, I just want you to know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and we, we, we're, going to have a, we're going to have a great time in the Holy Ghost tonight. Somebody said, I came out and looked around. There weren't many people. Well, that's fine, but the right people were here. No, I mean, not many people, but the right people were here. Uh, you know, in, in the days of Gideon, they looked around. There was too many people there, over 30,000. And then God had to bring it down to 300. So not all, a lot of people would be there, but the right people would be there. Amen. And then with the right people, God got the job done. There was more than 500 brethren that was there when Jesus actually disappeared out of their sight. They saw the glory of heaven manifested before their eyes, felt with the, the very physical body of the resurrected Lord Jesus, but only 120 were there on the day of Pentecost. The right folks were there, the ones who were going to run with it, not mess with it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The ones who have been trained and prepared for it. I can count them up for you. You know, I can give you 82 right off the bat. 
I can give you 81 rather right off the bat, uh, 11 of the 12 and 70 others also. And then when we start counting the woman, women and we get finished with the cousins and the relatives, I'm telling you right now, there wasn't much room uh, for anybody else. The 120 is now full. There's a number. There's a number that God's described. He's written. He's got a number. He's got a number. That's, that's how many I'm going to use. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I got myself 7,000. Hallelujah. I, I got my number. I've written it down. I got myself 7,000. Hallelujah. I determine I'm in that number. I'm telling you right now, I know I'm in that number. I tell you, in Jesus' mighty name, I'm certain of it. Nobody got to convince me of it. I don't need to sit down and be counseled as to whether or not I can have assurance in that number. Uh-uh. Because -uh. the Holy Ghost filled me with the witness and the boldness uh, to know that I'm in that number. Uh, more than just having my name written in the Lamb's book of life and the number of those who will do great exploits, those who will go all the way with God, those who will not, re re those will not hold anything back, everyone, those who are resolved to do everything that the Master has planned and will. Hallelujah. And that's not subjective. You don't have to wonder what that looks like. You don't have to wonder what that is. He's written it out in His Word. He's made it very plain. He's given us model and example after example after example the mighty men who knew him, the ones that declared to us and spoke out of the realm of heaven saying this is a real place that you can live in. They didn't live in religion. They lived in a relationship that allowed them to move out of an earthly realm into a heavenly realm. And when we saw them move into a heavenly realm, then we've seen men like Elijah do things that no one had ever done. We seen, saw men like Joshua do things that no man had ever done. We saw Moses do things that no man had ever done. We saw David do things that no man had ever done. And the list goes on. And the list goes on today. And you have an invitation. You have an invitation. It will cost you everything that you've ever learned. You will have to lay aside most everything that you've ever learned. You will have to face every one of your fears. You will have to be challenged with every area of pride and sense of inferiority or rejection or intimidation or fear. You will have to be challenged by everything in that realm that can touch you. Uh -huh. And the only way you're ever going to get through is because you have resolved yourself to do what's right, to do that which God has said to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, to put upon us your, your heart and your feelings and emotions a shield of faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. By which you're able to quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. <laughs> That's the only way. It's the only way because there's too many things easily going to take you out in a human realm, easily going to take you out when pride has been had a place or self-exaltation has had a place or self-living has had a place or the arm of flesh has been your refuge. So Father God takes us and he prepares us unto every good work, teaching us through all our situations and problems and concerns and trials and tribulations how to let him become our pl hiding place, the place of our refuge, huh? the place of our dwelling, hallelujah, hid, uh, hid under the shadow of, of, uh, uh, of his wing, abiding in the, uh, under the shadow of the Almighty, hallelujah. in the secret place, hallelujah, Harapapa. secret place that nobody knows about except for you and the Lord. I don't know about it, only you and the Lord. And you don't know about the secret place I have. It's between me and Him. It's a secret place. It's one that you personally found in a relationship that's been given you. Tonight, I want you to go, go ahead and grab a hold of crying out to God like He's going to answer you. I want you to go ahead tonight of singing and worshiping like God's going to respond to you when you do. I don't want you to be lip syncing in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I don't want you to be insincere in the presence of the Almighty. Hallelujah. I want you to know He's standing there looking at you. He's listening to you. Hallelujah. I'm Brumbatseya. And it's only, by the, it's only by the Spirit of the living God, not by mental ascent, not by human ability, not by human effort, not by human worthiness. Hallelujah but by the precious blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost that we have access into this realm. Oh, when you learn how to not move until God the Holy Ghost moves you, but you're only going to learn there on your knees. Oh, when you learn how to shout when only the Holy Ghost inspires you. Oh, but you're going to only learn that by continually giving yourself to these things of praise and thanksgiving. 
<laughs> oh, when heaven becomes real and earth not so important anymore. Huh? When the things of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit are far more valuable to you than earthly possessions and earthly cares. Oh, a door will be opened unto you. An entrance shall be ministered to you into the everlasting realm, into the everlasting kingdom of the dear Son. All oh, the glory realm that shall be manifested through your life. All those things that look like that they were impossible for you to ever know. All those things that you cast a, a desirous, covetous eye upon and looked and said, oh, that I could have been there in that day and at that time. Ah, oh, I live in a greater day and a greater time. Ah, oh, we live in a greater day and a greater time than the days of the Apostle Paul. For we're that much closer to the returning of the Lord. We're that much, we're that much greater in the increase of his government to which there is no end. We that much more to those days, these last days, that those who know their God should do great exploits. Oh, this is the day, this is the time. This is the time where, where sin and iniquity abounds, but the grace of God abounds much more. That means there's far more available to us right now than has ever been made available before because grace brings everything that God has provided. To even barely know that and not do that is a great, great tragedy. To even barely know what I said and not do it is a great tragedy. <laughs> so I need the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul, since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love to one towards another, I cease not to pray for you, crying out to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of Jesus Christ so that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. That's why I'm standing here. That's why I've been standing here a long time, shouting out to people, crying out, lifting up my voice in expectation of that day, in that moment, in that hour, where suddenly you begin to respond to the anointing like never before, and all heaven's grace is poured out upon you, and through you, God makes and produces a sovereign move. I'm going to talk to you about how God produces sovereign moves through willing individuals. Ha! Ha! Uh, listen, tonight, we're going to talk about how God produces sovereign moves that turns the hearts of the people back through individuals, through somebody willing to go all the way with God, someone le learning how to pray the right kind of prayer. Elijah learned how to pray the right kind of prayer. James said, learn how to pray like Elijah prayed. He, he said, hey, the, righteous, the, right, the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The, the prayer of Elijah will get it done. Learn how to pray like Elijah prayed. And then we understand what James was talking about when we turned to 1 Kings 17, 1, we discovered when, when, how Elijah prayed. He said, it shall not rain except I say so. That's a powerful prayer. <laughs> That's knowing that you stand in his stead, that you're now doing, uh, commanding things to be done that he has already willed. Ah, hallelujah. There'll come a day where people won't say, draw me nearer, oh, bring me nearer. There'll come a day where people will live in that place and say, I am here and it is dear. <laughs> it is dear. It is, it, 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 is, it is far beyond the price of gold or rubies or precious things. Of all the riches of the world and all the, the great things that man could do, still it cannot come close to what Father's freely given. When one man realizes it, for there are those who sit here tonight have not realized even the salvation message of Jesus. There will be those who come into this room tonight who not, have not even yet begun to realize the love of God for them. Father wants to bring that to an end. He wants you to step into a relationship and a fellowship, one that, he de one that he designed, one that he created. Let your doubt and unbelief be over. The Lord said for us to, to bear up and to carry the feeble-minded and to support the weak. But he said, receive no one under doubtful disputations, under people who want to continue, continually argue a doubtful, a, play, a position of doubt, or to try to confirm their position of doubt and unbelief. No, no, we're not going to allow that. We'll support you. We're not allow that. Uh -uh. We're going to call you into a place of believing what God has said. Most people live out the life that was defined for them by man. Most people live out a life that was defined, by them, defined for them by men. And most of the life that was defined by men is a terrible life, for men are very evil. 
They're very cruel. They're very ruthless. They constantly tell others and define to others that they can't be anything, can't do anything. They'll never amount to anything. When all the time God is declaring to us that he is free to give unto us anyone who will receive the majesty of his own glory, the position of his only begotten son. Because you cannot define sonship outside of the only begotten son of God. Because he defines sonship. He alone defines sonship of what it means to be a son of God. And as many as believed, he gave to them the authority to be sons of God. All they had to do is receive it. Tonight, we want you to receive that place in him. Tonight, we want you to be a, a water course where the Holy Spirit can flow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, I'm tell you right now, water don't flow uphill. <laughs> You'll never get water to flow uphill. You won't have to become the lowlands because you're never going to get water to flow uphill. Hallelujah. You're going to have to humble yourself and get down upon your face before the Almighty God and let Him exalt you because water won't flow uphill. But I'm going to tell you right now, tonight this day of the Lord will make you a place where the water courses flow naturally. The water of the Holy Ghost. You won't, you won't be trying nothing. You won't try to be making anything happen. You'll learn to live. Ha. You'll learn to walk. Ha. You'll learn to flow. Hallelujah. You'll learn to speak. Just like you learned to sp speak when you were a little baby. Goo goo, ga ga, ma ma, dad dad. <laughs> You'll learn how to speak. You'll learn how to speak. Why? Because you're around those who are speaking the word of truth, the word of life. You're being taught by the one who knows how to talk to the Father like no one else, the Son. You'll learn how to speak the words that only the Holy Ghost can teach. The goo goo, the gaga, the mama, the dada of the spirit will take you all the way to full sentences, to take you to Shakespearean English and, 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 and to great lofty things that, that, no, that nobody's ever been able, words nobody's ever been able to string together before. But in the spirit, but in the spirit, but in the spirit, but in the spirit. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Mumbabo siteya taya. Herasikara nemekiteya. Now, all of that, the past 15 minutes was because you were here. And I'm telling you right now, God wants you to grab hold of what I said and not let it go. Father wants you to believe it tonight and not let it go. Hallelujah. Because I'm telling you, what, what, what has been declared and what will continue to be declared will bring forth fruit in everybody who's thirsty for it and everybody who's hungry for it. But you've got to be thirsty enough and hungry enough not to let the things that would beset you and the things that would stop you in a fear because I'm going to tell you right now all hell will come out against you ever realizing what I just described all the powers of darkness will come out against you all of the circumstances that are justifiable will try to stop you from ever being what I just just described <laughs> but when you hungry and you thirsty <laughs> and you know that there's no other place for you to go, <laughs> that this right here at this moment in time is the place where you're going to enter in. Hallelujah. Yeah, everybody may be offended at the word and everybody may turn and go. And Jesus will look at you and say, will you go also? And your response will be, you alone have the words of life. Hallelujah. You alone have the access in. You alone are going to establish us. There's no place else to go. If you're not it, we're done. If you're not it, we're done. If we're not, if you're not it, we're done. Hallelujah. 